we're here tonight with a special guest. Uh, it's basically related to, our, again, our motorsports industry. Uh, we have uh, Mr. Ed Eskandarian. Anybody that, uh, I, I would say, the sanctioning bodies in those days, uh, what kind of uh, people that organized these things, uh, what were the names of those particular individuals? Well, uh, when we first were going, SCTA, I think it was, wasn't going uh, started yet, but there were other uh, timing associations like Western Timing and uh, let's see, Arnon was there Arnon there? Yeah, yeah. things like that, and yeah. uh, they'd have maybe uh, oh, I guess from times four or five uh, events during the summer months up there at with Muroc Dry Lake. Wow, I'll tell you, those must have been the times. Uh, then uh, when you got involved with the grinding cams, uh, you were finally, finally starting to sell those, correct? Uh, yeah. Well, luckily, uh, that uh, when the Hot Rod magazine came out, I put an ad in there, a two-inch ad, $5 per inch. And uh, by golly, it got back to North Carolina. And uh, they called up and ordered two by airmail. And uh, I only had one profile, I, that noisy one I was telling you about. And... Uh, they start buying more of them. Uh, there were only twenty dollars for the grinding and two dollars for a used core, but they wanted new cores at seven dollars a piece, and they were uh, boy, these were nice to deal with these fellas. And I often wondered, uh, do they know I'm a beginner, or maybe they don't care, or they're willing to buy anything and try anything from anybody? And it turned out that they reordered and reordered real good. It it turned out that my cams would pass cars on the track. The mid-range was real strong because of that snappy, fast action. And uh, it didn't peter out on the top end. It uh, had good power on the top end, too. And that's the reason they liked them. Well, my understanding of uh, selling cams down in south, uh, didn't uh, those guys uh, race on Sunday and run moonshine on Monday? Is that the deal? Uh, yeah, some of them <laughs> probably did. And uh, we... We were lucky we started out with a flathead. It was a very simple, lightweight valve train, valve train and we could abuse the uh, uh, the way of that fast, slappy action. You couldn't do that later on on the overhead valve engines. But uh, So what, uh, what I was probably going to throw away uh, as just a, a playing around, you know, <laughs> turned out to be a good cam. Did you yeah. open your first shop? When did you open your first shop, Ed? Well, it was in the garage at first, and... Uh, my friend had a little tool and die shop. Uh, that grinder I bought at the auction uh, had to have three phase power, so he let me put it in the back of his shop and pay him a little rent on a dirt floor, and and I paid seven hundred dollars for that machine and did a million dollars worth of labor on that machine. Was, was that with uh, John Athens? Was that, that was John Athens? Oh, he had okay. his partner Ray Lipper, who uh, is the father of. Uh, the other lipper who makes the uh, the uh, wheels, the centerline wheels. The custom yeah. centerline wheels, correct. Right. Yes, I remember that you guys shared that story with me back then about Ray Lipper uh, making custom wheels, and uh, that also was an interesting story there. Uh, Ed, uh, one of the things that uh, I wanted to talk to you about also is that uh, some of the people that you met in the drag racing in the early days, uh, I know that... Uh, we talked a little bit about uh, uh, the early days of drag racing. I think that uh, you met some people, uh, I think, if I'm not mistaken, uh, they wanted to be sponsored by you. Maybe you can talk a little bit about that. Uh, well, we would help uh, some fellas out. You know, they didn't have much money, and uh, we'd maybe make, uh, grind them a free cam or uh, and sometimes more than that. Uh, and later on, even Mickey Thompson came to see me. Oh, that must have been an interesting story there. <laughs> yeah, he had already gone uh, about 270 miles an hour at the Bonneville with a twin-engine Chrysler car. And uh, he got the idea, well, maybe I could go 400 if I had four engines. And he came to me and said uh, he'll need some help. He'll need... Uh, Two spare engines, that'd be six engines. He'll need six roller cams and springs and push rods and tappets and so forth. He'll need uh, four uh, Hillborn fuel injections, 
I'll have to pay for those. Buy them from Stu Hilborn. He'll need four magnetos from Joe Hunt. And boy, and uh, and I'll uh, and that'll be it. I won't have to give him any money. Just all these parts. Well, Ed, listen, we're going to take a commercial break here for a moment. Uh, we have a guest in studio guest with us this evening. His name is Ed Eskandarian, and he was telling us uh, some stories here about uh, some of the people that had come to him uh, to. Uh, uh, want to get parts sponsored by him. Uh, Ed, tell us about Mickey Thompson a little bit here. Well, I was a surprise when Mickey Thompson came to see me, uh, and he wanted uh, to build a car that'll do a, over 400 miles an hour, and he's going to use four Pontiac engines. And he had uh, he was uh, quite a promoter and uh, had quite a lot of enthusiasm and some bluff, but... And the main thing he had was uh, Fritz Voigt as a crew chief and mechanic. And uh, as he had gotten in with Knudsen uh, uh, at Pontiac, and uh, he he got these free engines. and and uh, So this was a factory deal, it sounds like to me. If he, uh, if he well, got... Yeah, he was getting some help from Pontiac, all right. And, and uh, so uh, he wants me to furnish him... Uh, there will be uh, two spare engines, so that will be six engines altogether. Uh, six roller camshafts and kits. That would be the springs, push rods, tappets, and so forth. And uh, and I'll have to go to still. I'll have to buy from still Stu Hillborn four fuel injection systems uh, and pay for that myself and give it to him. So what did you think about that kind of a deal? First time somebody come to you and wanted to promote a little bit from you. Well, with his enthusiasm, everything, you know, I, by golly, I fell for it. <laughs> and <laughs> had to buy four magnetos from Joe Hunt also, four scintillas. And, oh, then the other thing is we got to pay Fritz Voigt uh, 250 each for uh, six engines to be built. Well, he was, was so cheap. He was mm. the engine builder then for Mickey Thompson. That's right. Yeah. And uh, quite an asset to have Fritz Voigt working on you with you. How did how did you test these things? Uh, did you have oh, uh, talk uh, to me about that a little bit? Oh, uh, I had a buy, bought a dynamometer, and I said it'd be good to have this portable because it makes a lot of noise. And any time any of my customers uh, want to run their engines, they could take this. Uh, Bill Walker put it on a trailer for me, and you could take it out in the country and run your and the engine test your engine, you know, without bothering anybody. So this is just what Mickey needed because he had to dyno these engines. Was this a, a Clayton dyno or is it? Uh, what well, was a GE? Oh, yeah. I see. Okay, electric or uh, uh, water brake. Water yeah. brake. Okay, sure. So he took it over to Fritz Voigt's uh, shop, and the report got to, came back to me. You know, uh, you messed up on these uh, reverse rotation engines. They only put out uh, three hundred foot pounds of torque, whereas the uh, Normal rotation puts out 400 foot-pounds of torque. Well, I better go over there. Where are they? Uh, well, we're over at Fritz Voigt's. So we went over there, and uh, I saw that he didn't have enough water from his garden hose. He had to use uh, the garden hose from uh, the uh, induction hardening company next door and another one from the other neighbor. This is for the water break, right? Yeah, three oh. hooked together to get enough water. But I noticed... Uh, Finally, I noticed. Wait a minute. Uh, this had a trick linkage. Whether you could run, you could run either reverse or for normal rotation, and it would always pull down on the scale. And it was sitting there, and there was fifty pounds of torque on the scale, and it hadn't even been running. That was normal rotation. So I said, and I blurted it out. Hey, there's the trouble. You got fifty pounds of false horsepower for normal rotation. And you got to make in the reverse rotation. You got to make fifty to get the zero. So you really uh, both engines are three fifty, only three fifty each. And uh, you know who was there? The spark plug man, Dick Jones. And he took that discovery away from me. He talked more about it. It became his idea afterwards. Was he the champion yeah. guy, or he was the champion spark plug That's uh, who expert? I thought he was, yeah. Right? Yeah. So uh, from then on, I says, I'm not going to blurt out things like that. I'm going to first test everybody to see if they know the answer first. (laughs) 